sorry. Uh, Vivi should be here. Yeah, Vivi's here. Yeah, yeah. So I will ask uh, uh, Vivi to come on stage, right? Uh, and Chloe Drick also to come on stage. And a third panelist, uh, uh, Louis. Yeah, Louis, Louis. <laughs> to, come <coughs> to come on stage and so we can have this uh, uh, discussion all together. And it will be a participative, right? So you will have, a, of course, the ability to jump in, ask questions, right? Yeah, have a seat, maybe here. So, it's okay. so, so we will start uh, uh, this discussion. So th the, the panel will be really about like uh, how we call it sometimes the big tech versus the multitude, right? So uh, actually what we can or can't or should or should not learn, do or act uh, uh, to, uh, yeah, thank you very much. And so for this uh, panel, so you, we had, uh, for the people who were there, uh, Vivi was uh, presenting earlier in Clordric. We also host uh, a new uh, panelist, uh, uh, Louis here uh, from Digital New Deal. So maybe we can make a small turn, like maybe just a small presentation for both of you, for people who were there. And maybe Louis, you can uh, uh, tell a little bit more about the, um, uh, where you come from and uh, also uh, what you've recently published to start the discussion, right? So maybe Vivi, can you begin? Sure, just a couple of words about myself. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, so yeah, my name is Vivi Lahtenoya. I uh, come here from Helsinki, uh, where I work as the Deputy General Manager for an organization called My Data Global. And we work for the human-centric um, control of personal data and this kind of a shift in the personal data paradigm. Yeah, yeah. Can you share the mic? Can, can you say just a word for, for the people who are not there to the presentation? Can you Pardon? just say who you are? Yeah. Okay, so I'm Chloé Dric, and I'm a, me I'm a member of La Quadrature du Net, which is an organization, uh, uh, NGO, uh, defending the right and freedom uh, on the digital uh, place. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Louis. Uh, I work for the think tank Digital New Deal. Um, basically, our work tries to decipher what is at stake um, in the digital revolution, and our work is mostly focused on regulation and maybe that would be a start. Uh, we've published um, in the beginning of September a note called Big Tech Re Regulation, uh, empower the many by regulating a few, and we try to address the, uh, the topic of big tech regulation, and we propose uh, basically a, um, a regulation that would be directly specified for the big techs, uh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And so actually what would be great, so this, uh, uh, this paper is available on the, on the, um, the Digital New Deal Foundation uh, website, but he has uh, like five points, right? You know, it has uh, five main points. Can you try to elaborate on, on some of the points too? Yeah, of course. Um, the, the, the basis of the, of the report was to say that um, these big tech companies have grounded their success on three main pillars that are quite simple. It's significant economies of scale, uh, powerful network effects that you guys might know uh, that basically the value of a service increases according to the number of uh, others using it. And the third one is the free access to the services that uh, help them acquire audience. Um, and f in our opinion, is a threat for sovereignty in its uh, different exceptions, uh, state sovereignty, uh, because of security, because of the dependence on infra infrastructures, for citizen so sovereignty, and it's uh, what like what uh, works a lot on uh, for civil, civil liberties, uh, personal data treatment, and for company sovereignty as well, because they have they have no access to data and they have huge barriers to enter the market. And so we've done um, four main proposals. The first one was to basically to tougher uh, antitrust rules for big tech companies, um, basically by saying uh, we should. Um, um, make them accountable for basically the, the harm they make to society in general. The second one was to extend the concept of net neutrality uh, to devices. Uh, the third one was to consider data as a common good uh, with two main proposals uh, that were uh, considered data as uh, essential infrastructures. And the second one was, I'm sorry, just. <laughs> Uh, the second one was, um, yeah, set up a neutral ser server managed by an ind independent third party. And the uh, fourth proposal, which uh, Medi contributed to, um, was basically uh, try to set up an ap API-driven regulation. And uh, Medi did two main proposals, which were uh, the first one, the concept of API neut neutrality. 
And the second one that, in my opinion, is really interesting and that I look forward to see developed uh, in our society is basically the right to be represented by a bot or, um, if I say it or other well, uh, otherwise, is basically to create like uh, individual APIs to handle and manage uh, our personal data. So yeah, so this note is uh, uh, is interesting, uh, but but yeah, so uh, maybe to open the, the discussion, so uh, big tech multitude, right? Actually, uh, what we can do, or what we should do, right? Because just I use Google as for my search. I'm on Netflix one hour a day, right? I'm on uh, I'm, a, I'm on an iPhone, right? Uh, I take Uber or sometimes Marcel, you know, when I when they're available. So yeah, so they really they we use these big techs in our lives, right? Um, there is also, uh, in big tech, I also consider governments at some point, yeah, because they're, they're also one part of the, uh, the um, deploying tech, right, uh, for, um, for doing mass uh, uh, scale, let's say, um, technology at scale for good and bad, right? Uh, yeah, wha what actually we can do, right? Um, you know, so maybe uh, Vivi with my data, uh, you know, what, what's your work on this? Um, so I think uh, it's it's interesting to, to sit on this panel and, and hear hear the background because uh, I hear um, obviously a critique of, of technological solutionism, uh, but I also hear uh, very uh, optimistic ideas about regulation. Um, I think that we need both of those, and uh, we also what we do need to do is to take into to consideration the marketplace and business um, to create sustainable business models. Uh, and to make sure that the kind of ethical use of personal data or data in general is, is always the most profitable one. Um, and then obviously I think um, it's it's important to take into consideration always the societal like ripple effects of, of uh, the technologies and the, the legislation. Uh, they can't be an end in themselves, so we need to we need to really have a clear idea of what's the direction as a society that we have to go to, and that needs to guide what we do. Yeah. Claude Drake, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we we um, proposed some uh, s a few months ago um, uh, to to force the big companies uh, to create uh, an interoperability um, to say that uh, yeah the, the the way the this big company works uh, is not sustainable because people stay in this company only because there are their social relation uh, inside uh, in uh, in Facebook. Uh, for the, the first one, the big one, um, uh, people stay uh, as it is a very big problem, a bi very big issue to stay there because there are big, uh, a lot of problems with what people uh, can watch uh, on Facebook, uh, the way uh, it is um, uh, the, the selection of, uh, uh, of information uh, people uh, provide to, to uh, Facebook provide to people. Uh, and we say that uh, this kind of um, regulation like uh, uh, force these companies to interoperate, to inter interoperate um, should be uh, should be a, um, a goal to government uh, to to make uh, the system more uh, much more better for people. So that's a, a big a big proposal we have. Uh, and uh, yeah, you 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 say the uh, we we need to. To, to manage um, some, some better place for, for people and uh, um, the data should be used uh, correctly. Um, and we have uh, in France uh, a big, um, a, a, a big uh, subject uh, this, uh, this month, uh, which is the Health Data Hub. And the Health Data Hub is a very big uh, database with a lot of information of uh, health in France. Um, so we are working on and uh, there is uh, big issues uh, with, uh, with this database because we don't really know how it will be used um, by, uh, by uh, companies, uh, which companies will uh, be able to access to it and how they will use this data uh, for people or against the people. And that's a, a, a big concern uh, about what we provide uh, as, in, as information, as data, to, to the government and uh, how the government use it against us or for us because we, we, we can use this kind of data uh, for the good 
uh, to find new cure, to find new new way to uh, to help people, uh, and we can use uh, we can use it against people, like to profile people and uh, make them pay uh, much more because you know in your family you had some con some uh, uh, some problems, uh, health problems, so we don't want to, to assure you uh, if, uh, uh, if you don't pay more, uh, something like that. And we don't want this kind of usage uh, of uh, data. Yeah, on the regulation, yes. Uh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, sorry. <coughs> uh, basically, yeah, I'm, I'm totally right with what you said. Um, in my opinion, we are coerced in using like these services and basically this is the f uh, yeah, free will questions, like do we have the choice to actually use Facebook? to actually use Google, I don't think we have. I think we just depend on it. And I think it's uh, linked to their, um, the ideology that is behind these companies and it, that is basically the um, libertarian, yeah, you, you got it, um, that basically says that um, it's um, individual liberties that are over general interest and this is a conception of life that is completely different from what we know in Europe. Um, they basically think that their services, and because they're free, uh, could and should replace what the states offer and what are the missions of the state, which is basically offering public services. And, uh, and that is like a main issue. Um, for example, I've seen on Twitter, like recently, um, uh, it was about the jump uh, services of mobility. And they were showing that um, the app was uh, only available in, let's say, the safe neighborhood of Paris, and basically putting on the side the neighborhoods that were considered as non-safe, which is a nonsense. The, um, the no-go zones. Yeah, right? the no-go zones in Paris, yeah, exactly. Um, and so I think there's two ways of um, basically addressing this issue. Um, I think both Chlorotic uh, Association and mine are really different because we actually don't uh, fight on the same, um, let's say, yeah, we don't have the same aim. Um, mine is more uh, about like, um, um, yeah, market, market choice, like having the choice of, you know, having a, an economic uh, competition and the Chlorodic is more in civil liberties, but I think both are, let's say, um, not similar, but we're like kind of uh, trying to go the same way. Um, and I want to make one point is like when I say we should regulate, it's important to regulate, but it's important to regulate not to give more power to the state. And this is a link with what Chloe Dick was saying in his presentation. Um, we should find a way of regulating um, by giving power to the what we've called the multitude, which is the many innovators like uh, startups, citizens. Uh, we give we need to give them access to data so they can actually innovate and uh, and offer alternatives. So actually, the, the aim of, of this panel was really to uh, to define how we can reconcile reconcile the citizen and the customer. Right, and find maybe like some overlap to have uh, the economic and the politics power f to the same to the same uh, nudge, right? So one question. So uh, last year we had this awesome uh, regulation called GDPR, right? Uh, that came into into the game, right? Uh, I've read a number that uh, 250 billion dollars have, have been spent to be compliant, right? You know, so it's a huge amount of money, right? But actually, what's the what's the impact for us, right? You know, um, just an example. I've made like more than 150 GDPR requests for companies. They they are not ready. Most of them they don't comply, <coughs> right? So and so my question is like uh, to you today from all what you've done with the my data with the uh, la quadrature and uh, and uh, with digital new deal, is the GDPR just a, a tiger of paper? Ooh. Yeah, this year we, we find Google with uh, 50 million euros, uh, so that's some things. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, we, um, we made some, um, um, we, ah, how can I, I'm sorry. No, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a. You sued them, you sued them? Yeah, yeah, we sued, uh, sorry. We sued um, Amazon, uh, Facebook, uh, Microsoft, um, etc. And the only one uh, who has been fined is Google in France. The other one are now in uh, Luxembourg for Microsoft and, um, and in uh, uh, Ireland for the other one. And we know that uh, they play with that, saying that yeah, we are in Ireland, 
but it is just uh, that uh, our company is in Ireland. It is not because Ireland is nice with us, uh, and uh, they are they are all the companies, uh, the American companies, and so they are full and they can't uh, uh, prosecute correctly. Um, so yeah, we have a problem with the GDPR like that because. Um, they should uh, be able to, to manage uh, all the cases in all Europe, uh, to, to move the cases in all Europe, but for now, uh, for now it is not working like that. So we have a big problem, a big issue with, uh, with that. So it's divide and conquer, right? They used all the countries of Europe to divide and conquer. Yeah, not to and it is what uh, they, uh, the, the, the CNIL uh, doesn't want to. They say that they wanted a text for all Europe uh, to to avoid this kind of problem, and we are blocked by this problem now. So yeah, we have uh, this uh, this big issue, and we we prosecute um, uh, these companies, these five companies, the GAFAM, uh, exactly for this reason to test uh, to test the GDPR, and we know that this is not working correctly. And Vivi, on GDPR, yeah, you it has been big topic at my data, right? Of course it has, and um, I would I would agree uh, with, uh, with what was said before, but I would also like to point out that uh, I think the GDPR is a massive symbolic success. Uh, it's, it's something that the world is looking to as a benchmark for regulation in this space. Uh, we have the CCPA in California coming into effect just next month. Um, they're talking about federal legislation uh, that's going to be very much aligned with, with the, the GDPR. We have Brazil, we have Japan, we have all over the world uh, people waking up to this. I think the, the, the EU was incredibly prescient um, and forward thinking and forward looking when they started drafting this already years and years ago. Um, and now the rest of the world is kind of waking up to, to the power that is personal data. So in, in that sense, I think it's been a, a success. Uh, obviously, the implementation, enforcement, there are massive problems there, um, but it's, it's not, there's also a, a huge upside, I think. Yes, Louis, with the, yeah, you work on yeah. this too, right? Really quickly, um, I totally agree with what was said and especially what uh, Vivi said is, um, I think it was really symbolic to actually vote the GDPR, and it's good because Europe is basically uh, seen as like a z um, really a normative space uh, that we are able to actually put rules uh, on digital issues, so that is a good thing. And actually, as you said, it's being um, basically uh, duplicated in different ways, but like let's say the basis is there in uh, many other countries in the world. Um, I would just say that in my opinion, um, the issue with that kind of regulation is that it's horizontal and basically it, um, it puts every actor on the same level, which is different because, which you can't do. I mean, a big tech company is not like a small uh, business. Maybe you guys have uh, like a, a, a small business company. Um, you're not uh, equal uh, in terms of the GDPR to actually um, be compliant to the GDPR if you're an SME or if you're a big tech company. And actually, this is something that we've uh, witnessed with the GDPR. It's like big tech companies have, um, um, how do you say, um, offered services to actually be compliant to the GDPR to small companies because the first one that were compliant were the big tech. So it was a symbolic, but I think it's just a first step uh, for next uh, decisions. Yeah, what we say in La Quadrature is that uh, if you want to manage uh, personal data, it is like uh, you are a very little company and uh, saying, oh, it is too, too, uh, too complicated to, uh, to use personal data with the GDPR. Yeah, but if you want to be a little company and use a radioactive matter, <laughs> uh, th there is a big issue. It is the same. A new metaphor, data as a radioactive material, right? <laughs> No, but uh, yeah, the, the thing is, um, you know, um, some people say in Europe we are great to uh, use money to make regulation, right? And in the U.S. they are great to use regulation to make money, right? You know, and so my point here is that okay, we are in Europe we're winning the ideas part. You know, even in banks we have the PSD2 regulation that obliges banks to ha to have a neut neutral APIs, right? The API neutrality. Uh, and um, yeah, but again, it's taken all over the world. Everybody's following that. But the banking ecosystem, right, are actually settling in uh, Southeast Asia, or in, in the US, and, and other places. So is with GDPR the same, right? You know, you're, you believe in, fr let's say, freer market, right? Free competition, right? So uh, yeah, because GDPR was launched without the tools to make GDPR happen. 
yeah, wh wh what's go what's going? Are we but just taking the the symbolic leadership? Yeah, not not as a project manager of Digital New Deal, but as a citizen. My first thought about GDPR, and when I talked about it with my friends, was like, how do we use it? I mean, what is it for? Like, I'm a as a citizen, how am I supposed to use it? Like, I did download my uh, data on Facebook, but I had like many files, and yeah, I realized that. I was, you know, like uh, gathering all that data with me and that it would never probably disappear. But what do I do with it? And I think that's the next step. And I think that's the shift Europe is doing is like um, uh, regulating by innovation. And, and, and by, for example, if one day the uh, API, like the right to be represented by a bot would actually exist and be created by companies, that would be an amazing, an, an amazing thing. It's like making realize people that they can actually leverage the data, use it, uh, and I think that it would create another economy, like uh, that economy that would be probably more uh, sustainable than the one that is actually uh, in place because uh, it's only a few players that um, get all the, the, the reward from it. Maybe we will. Uh, oh, good. So uh, <coughs> on, the, uh, on the other side, on the, on, let's say on the, um, on the economic side of data, right, and the citizen part of the citizen value of the data, right, uh, we see more and more data accumulated in, in places, right. Instead of owning, let's say, or let's say, finding our personal data in one place we control, we have our personal data spread many, many times in many platforms, right. Or also, you talked about the TES, you know, database in France, uh, you know, Chloridric. So the government is gathering all the data in one place, right. And so everybody knows in security that when you gather everything in one place, you're making it like more attractive to hackers, right? A honeypot. A honeypot, yeah. This is what they call it, the honeypot, right? And uh, uh, yeah, so uh, this, is this model really sustainable, right? You know, to accumulate always data in many, many places. And, and how we can solve that? I have no... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a tough question. It is, yeah. Um, I, I touched on this a little bit in in my talk, in the sense that I don't I don't think that we should be creating these m these massive vaults uh, of of uh, all my data um, in in one place. I think, I mean, from just from a security point of view, it's it's pretty dicey. Um, so what um, what the my data community are are thinking, um, playing around with at the moment are are um, something called my data operators, uh, w which basically can be data stores um, but they what they the main function would be would be to connect the the different kinds of stores and places where data is so you don't actually have to collect it all in one place but you have a network of operators just like you have a network of telephone operators right you have a network of data operators you can connect your data between different operators and different services that connect to those different operators um, so this is what's being developed right now is a, is a business model for this because it doesn't exist as of yet. Um, but um, that's, that's the kind of my data way of, of approaching this issue. Uh, 10 years ago, uh, Sarkozy tried to create an um, identity card with, um, with a chip inside, two chips, uh, one for the identity and uh, the other one to, um, uh, to provide uh, some information to, um, uh, uh, to buy things on the internet. Um, or to connect to the internet to be sure you are the real person uh, uh, on, the, on the computer. Um, and uh, the CNIL was not uh, fine with that. Uh, the Conseil Constitutionnel was not fine with that. Uh, La Quadrature was not fine with that. Um, and uh, what the CNIL said is that it should be, um, because the, the chip was just um, connected to a database of uh, the police uh, in France uh, with all the information, uh, facial recognition, uh, a lot of information about you in a big database like the Onipot. Um, and what the CNIL said and La Quadrature tools, uh, it, it was that you should put all the information in the identity card and everybody should be able to, um, to decide if they want to give the information to the police or not. If the police uh, don't have the right to arrest you, like you are some black people and they are in the street and they say, oh, a black people, we arrest you. Give me uh, your identity card, we will check. Um, they can't in France, it is not uh, allowed. Um, you should be able to 
not give them information about, uh, about you because you own your information inside the identity card and they have no information uh, about you. So that's a solution to move the information to the people and not to keep them in a big database in the government. I, I know you, you fight hardly for freedom, right? Uh, uh, with La Quadrature, right? But just a question, I've visited some countries at the border, they ask me my email address, they ask me my social accounts, and it's, it's you, when you begin to say that, hey, I'm really obliged to do that, they, they make you understand that they're maybe not obliged to let you in, right? And so I stayed two hours, and one time four hours. I will not name the countries, but you can imagine. Um, and, and yes, and, and some countries were not considered as democracies, right? So I was ready. But some countries were, were considered or claiming they were democracies right, at, at this point, right? And I understand the fact that you, you, you need to know who is you on your own territory, right? But uh, they even do that for their own citizens, right? So, uh, so, yeah, so can we really say no to a policeman asking for something? In France, you should be able to do no to some police uh, uh, p police uh, people. Uh, but yeah, I n we know that yeah. it is complicated. Right. But uh, we are able to do that. And if you are sure of you, as you see, if you say to them that there is a law, like when you mm, record some video uh, uh, of, uh, of a policeman, uh, you can do that. And if they don't want to, that's the same thing. And yeah, sometimes they shoot uh, on reporters, uh, journalists. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the case uh, a few days ago. Uh, 25 journalists have been shot, uh, shot by, uh, by the police uh, five, years ag five days ago um, in the, the same day. So yeah, we have a big issue with uh, our police, but uh, it is our right. And if we want to say that uh, we are in a country of uh, rights, uh, and of freedom, uh, we should continue to do that, uh, even if there is problem with the uh, police. Yeah, sometimes they often claim that France is not the country of the human rights, but the country of human rights declaration. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. They, <laughs> they claim like that. So some French jokes about French. So a question, if we can say or can't say no to a policeman asking for your identity or your personal data, what about the market? When an insurer will ask you, hey, actually, uh, we know you have a lot of data about yourself, Right? If you give it to us, it's really, it's really better if we have a better price, right? At some point, will, will we be obliged to give it to have the premium offers? Or we, uh, and so we will stay always in a, in a really like expensive ones or stuff like that? It's not authorized by the GDPR. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not a low, uh, it's not allowed yet, I agree. C can you just rephrase the, the no, question? No, no, the question is that, uh, you know, the social pressure now, because now we, we know you have a lot of data, at some point, we can ask you to have more data to have more perks, right? To share more data to have more perks, right? So at some point, it may become a social obligation to, to give a little bit more than you, you want it, right? I don't think that way. Um, and just to come back on the topic, on the previous topic, uh, I think there's also the, the principle of proportionality. Um, it's like, do we need to ask people their uh, social uh, accounts, name of social accounts, um, when you actually go through a border? Like, is it really um, a need for the state to have that? Like, uh, probably they have it already, so what's the point? And it's the same with the Article 57 uh, in France and the same with the facial recognition test that um, took place in France, like in Nice, uh, and uh, the second one was uh, Marseille. Marseille yeah. uh, it's like, do we really need to use that technology to actually uh, in front of schools? And to answer your question, um, I don't think that would be that simple um, um, to use your ID and the idea that because basically Medi contributed to the um, publication with it, Big Tech Regulation, and Medi proposed um, um, this idea of, I mean, talked about the idea of uh, created an API um, at the, at for the individual, I think that it would actually allow people to uh, have a better use and have a better uh, understanding of the value of data. I'm quite against the fact of uh, giving money for the data we produced. Um, I, it, this is another view of, uh, how do you say, patrimonialization? Uh, yeah, patrimonialization. Yeah, patrimonialization of data is not something that I believe in. Uh, the fact that we actually get control on the data and and decide uh, who uses it, uh, who we give it, who we give it to, um, this is like yeah, the, the, the society I want. 
Yeah, no, so because everybody talks about the data economy, right? Or the data, the value of data. Mm -hmm. But actually, uh, when people try to define how much value it is, you know, they try to find an advertisement market. That's approximately $300 per person per year, approximately. Some people consider the capital. Hey, if this data is shared to other companies, right? And some people evaluate it to $10,000, right? Approximately, right? You know, uh, my Facebook data, if it will be shared with everybody, right? Uh, but yeah, but it's, it's, it's not enough, at least for now, it's not enough for company to really live, right? Or to, be, to make sustainable things. Mostly because actually the, how Facebook uses data, they are made to use this data. When you are someone else, you will be just a degraded version, right? Using, you will just be, use what you can, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you do your GDPR dumps, uh, takeouts, they know that this is what they think. So, uh, uh, so yeah, so maybe Vivian on, on the data economy, right? Who will be the, the, the sustainable models, right? You say infrastructure, but can you also do uh, more with the data? Um, or should you, should, should we do more? I think, yes, uh, we should do more with data because there's, a, I think there's no good reason not to do good things with data. Obviously, the, the emphasis on the, on the word good there. Um, we should um, absolutely be, be getting all the benefit we can out of data. And now having said that, um, I do understand and, and have sympathies for people who value their privacy over certain benefits they might get from sharing their data. And that's also part of my data is that, because we all uh, exist on this spectrum, right? So uh, sort of at the one end, it's like absolute privacy. I don't want anyone to know my name, my who I am online. And then the, the other end is I want as, as customized as possible services um, and uh, th things, uh, like benefits which are, which are, are um, coming to me only if I, if I share my personal data. And I think it's, it's the point of my data is that we all get to choose where we land on that spectrum and then act accordingly and have those wishes respected, right? Um, so it's, um, well, uh, when I said, yes, we should be using more data, I'm not saying you as a person should be doing, sharing more data, but we as a society, yes, I think there's still so much potential in data that we should be using more of it. So if you want to add something to, yeah, oh. no. So I if, we have, uh, if we have more data, uh, yeah, if we have more data out, um, there's a lot of possibility about fakes, right, and deep fakes. So I don't know, some, some, some people show that, for example, if they take H, uh, HD photos of your fingers, they can recompose your fingerprints, right? You know? And they made on the ministry Ursula von der Leyen in Germany. Now she has better uh, responsibilities, right? So yeah, and she took a photos, right, the HD photo, and he was able to do a fingerprint, right, uh, based on that, right? So the more data we'll produce, the more trace of ourselves we'll be able to do, right? So as long as we are nobody, it's fine. But when will be someone? So uh, so yeah. So how? Maybe at the quadrature. This is also why you fight for. You know. Mm, I, uh, this is not really what we what we we, we fight for. Um, we we fight to to. I I don't know how to yeah. to to. No uh, no. The the question is like with more data out. You know, with more data out, you know, we leave more trace of your of ourselves. But uh, but you you should not, as a company, use this kind of data uh, a way uh, you you're not able to 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 use them. So um, and and in G in the GDPR that uh, it is a text uh, we we worked uh, on uh, ten years ago, um, you you should not uh, get information uh, you will not use in your process. So. Um, it is a minimization of uh, the data, so you should not get information. Uh, uh, you you don't have you don't need to use. Uh, so I don't think um, we will have a lot of information uh, in a few years uh, in all these companies. Um, only uh, when you are in the social media like Facebook and you put you by yourself uh, some information. But the other companies should not um, get a lot of information. So I don't, I don't know if it will really happen. So wh why I'm asking that? Because I've tried to ask my data from Facebook, right? And, uh, and when they send me the data, as you say, there is no links. There is not the social graph, right? They, they tell you, oh, for example, Louis is your friend. 
But they don't tell you whose Louis it is on the network, right? They just give you L O U I S, right? That's it, right? No, no identifier, right? As we say technically. So I, I had a long discussion, exchanged it with them. Takes 15 days e each, but it's fine. But say no, I, I want my identifier. This is my friend. This is a connection I made on your system, thanks to me. So I own the connection. They say no, you don't own the connection. The connection is owned by us, right? So this is why I'm asking that also is that, uh, what would you answer? To this, to to this kind of uh, discussion, right? You will save me thousands of dollars of lawyer, by the way, if you are able to do. But yeah, but these companies do not do not comply, right? They claim that actually the data you have on a network, they just give you us really, really what the GDPR said. That's what you produce directly, right? But the social graph is a bijection. It's you have to be two, right, to to generate it. And so, uh, have you ever faced this kind of? That's the reason we, we push for the interoperability, because this uh, this objection doesn't uh, uh, is not a Facebook um, a Facebook information. It is your information. You provide them uh, this connection. Uh, so yeah, we we should have uh, the possibility to export uh, the social uh, network, uh, because they are not a social network. They are only a social media. Um, so yeah, this is a, this is a very big point. Yeah, and maybe on the limits of my data compared to my friend's data, right? No. Right. Well, that's a that's a massive can of worms, isn't it? Um, now I, I would also like to point out that there is a legitimate case to be made for for Facebook to say, like, look, okay, you did X, Y, and Z. You provided us this data, but then we invested in money and resources into generating uh, a bunch of um, enriched data or inferred data from from yours. So um, obviously Facebook is uh, is uh, <laughs> notorious for for doing terrible things with that. Um, but you you have to always keep keep considering like uh, companies' intellectual property as well, right? You can't just go go about saying like it's it's uh, uh, it's got something to do with me, therefore I own it and I and I must be paid for it or whatever. Um, but uh, to answer your question about you know what's mo sort of my data or data about me and what's um, about someone else, um, I, I always like to use the example of, of something very simple and, and personal, like my birth date. Um, is often you consider an example of me. That's a very simple thing, and that's that's clearly mine, right? Um, but what does it tell me about my mother? Where was she? Um, on that day at that time, right? So very little um, data about us is actually just about us. Um, and that's why I think um, my data definitely um, needs to operate on also on a collective level. Um, so for example, in Finland at the moment, we have this uh, service, uh, one of the major retail chains uh, with their loyalty cards, they open, opened up all the data. So you can basically see how much you spend on cheese in a year kind of thing. Uh, but they are encountering massive problems with this because often people have um, spouses have linked cards and they have children who may use the card as well. So whose whose data is that actually? Like wh whom does that data describe? So we need to be able to to also move away from the sort of very individualistic level to uh, a level of abstraction that makes sense in the context such as a household, for example, at times. Um, so I'm I'm very much an advocate of. Let's let's not talk about just individuals, but let's let's talk about on the level where it makes sense at a time. Maybe Lewis on the on the mid more free market position. Yeah, interoperability should be good, right? Yeah. Um, no, I wanted to make a point. It's like there's two sides of the coin. This is the um, um, the data we give them, um, the one we give them by every click we do, uh, is basically um, the emanation of our personality. So we should get the property on it. That's one side of the, of the coin. The other side is the fact that we produce data by using the services and, um, and there's a slight difference. And this data we produce, uh, there's a lot of, of, of it that is like, a, in my opinion, of general interest. Uh, let's take Waze or let's take, um, you know, all that app that uh, offers uh, offered us uh, um, services. Um, I think the state or, um, um, yeah, the state should have access to this general interest data to better, um, basically, um, file law and, and help to reconstruct the routes and everything. So there's one side of the gun is like we should protect the fact that we give uh, a, a bit of us to them and the fact that we produce uh, value and data through using it their services, uh, whereas we should um, 
have like a grasp on it and, and yeah, that makes sense. Do you have any question in the room? Five people asking questions, right? Participate into the discussion. Yeah, don't hesitate, right? Yeah. So we seem to answer most of them, right? It, it's a, we are thanks to the strike. We're in an intimate environment, so it's a safe place to ask questions, right? <coughs> so. Um, um, I, I, I would maybe also uh, ask on the, um, <coughs> you know, s like the trace of our data, as, as we said earlier, but sometimes when I share a photo of me and my two friends, right, where's, where's the limit there, right? My two friends are on it, right? Do they have a right on it or not? You know, the right to say, no, actually, I don't want to be on this photo, right? Or, yeah, so it's on the network. So, uh, yeah, maybe Vivi, like, how, how did you work on, this, on these topics? Uh, yeah, we, I've been uh, thinking a lot about uh, something called group privacy, which is it kind of touches on this. It's specifically on, on cases like um, there's a, a photo of a group of people uh, who has what kinds of rights to it. I think this is, I mentioned in my talk earlier that I think ownership is a particularly bad concept to use when it comes to data and personal data, and this is an example of why that is so. So in terms of who owns the pic, the, the question of who owns the picture of, of the, the four of us here it makes very little sense compared to asking what kind of rights do each of us have regarding that photo. Um, so I have the right to, to sort of veto the publication of the photo of all of us, but doesn't mean that I somehow own, own that photo, right? Um, there was um, an interesting case that um, I, I stumbled across, um, which is, um, Related to this, but which I don't don't really have the answer to. So if I if I ask um, you to remove some some personal information of mine from from a website, right? Um, and I have th I have that right uh, to ask you to do that. Um, but you don't want to be seen as active on that site at that time, and there will be a log of you deleting um, my information from there. So do you have the right to refuse to share your data in order to kind of comply with my request to, to delete my data? Um, so these are the kind of questions that I'm, I'm thinking about um, sort of academically at the moment. Yeah, and as a philosopher, background in philosophy, yeah, only people like you spending <laughs> all the time can answer these kind of tough, uh, tough questions. So um, yeah, we have time for one more, for one question if you will. Yeah, yeah. So maybe Adam, can you help? Uh, in in many in some cases at least, um, medicine is is uh, invented in universities, and if you think of our tax money, we pay for universities, we pay for doctors, and they invent medicine that we still buy afterwards. I'll make that as a comparison with the fact that sometimes we provide data to LinkedIn or Facebook and so on and so forth, and they do services with our data that we wouldn't be able to do them ourselves. So why not pay for them? Why not, why not pay a price, maybe not monetary, but a different price? How do you, how should we consider the limit between paying indirectly to services that we would not be able to invent versus paying indirectly to services or digital services that we think it's our data and should not, we should not uh, pay for it? Thank you. You have uh, three hours to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so if I understand you correctly, the, the, the question is uh, we are paying for these things with our data. Um, so why sort of why put why not put a monetary value on it? Um, okay. Uh, so personally, I would I would rather pay money to use Google than have them have unrestricted access to my data. But that's that's a personal preference. So that would be my short answer to that. That's our general uh, <laughs> NGO preference. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's the same. Uh, you, you can't say that uh, there is um, money on the data because um, it is not your data. You, you can't say that uh, uh, your data has a value. Your data has no value. I'm s very sorry. <laughs> your data personally has no value. My data has no value. What has value is our general data, is the way they get 100,000 uh, of data of uh, people every day, every minute, uh, that is value. So uh, what we say is that it is a common value. We have to manage this kind of data 
uh, uh, from a common level. So we can say that we will pay uh, for this uh, kind of services with our data. It is not our, uh, it is not our will, it is not our decision. Uh, we should do that with the state, with, uh, with the law. Uh, so if we want to pay for these services, yeah, we, we, we should pay with real money. Uh, if they want to uh, create services with, um, with our personal data, uh, it is forbidden by the GDPR. They can't use it the way we don't want. Uh, and uh, it is, uh, and we, we don't should um, uh, be able to say that there is a specific um, uh, value to our data. Um, yeah, and this question um, um, will allow me to actually circle with what I said first. Um, I think I don't want to give them that much power to handle basically, and the companies you've basically specified is uh, companies that compete public services, and I don't want to give them the possibility and too much power to actually handle this. Um, my conception uh, is that yeah, the state is supposed to actually provide through the tax we paid, and the issue is that they don't pay taxes, um, so I'm not going to give them money, whereas they don't pay taxes, so they offer me services that the state should provide. And I think that's, um, that's the main issue that is trying to be ruled right now, uh, and let's see if uh, the uh, OECD gets uh, an agreement. Yeah, so what you say is that if everybody make a GDPR request and give all the data to, some, to a company, to another company, they could do a similar service? Um, two, right? They could do a similar service if every one of us make a GDPR request, right, and send the money to the other? Well, I have no idea, let's see. Hey, you ask me I a don't question. Know, I, I we can dream. Yeah, we let's dream. It's free, right? I mean, you've been pessimistic the whole, the whole talk, so now you're being <laughs> optimistic. Yeah, we need to find, a, you know, yeah, we, we need to, f to be pessimistic, right? Oh, to be optimistic, sorry. <laughs> we need to be optimistic. We need to be pessimistic to <laughs> understand that we need to be optimistic, right? Yeah. You know? yeah. So maybe, uh, maybe a last word, uh, last word, and thank you for everybody to, uh, uh, to have an active um, uh, listening. Uh, how we can help you contribute to what you do and where we need to go next to, uh, you know, to know more about what you do? Um, mydata.org. Uh, has all the information um, and we need people who work with personal data, around personal data, to to kind of learn about my data and, and who people who share our values to, to work for them in, in their organizations. Um, I think the best place to get to know us, base, best place to get to know us is Slack, uh, so head on over there and um, you can find out different ways to contribute. Yeah. Thank you, Vivi. Yeah, um, the La Quadrature uh, is an NGO uh, living only with uh, what you give to us. So we, you can give uh, money to, <laughs> to La Quadrature to help us. Uh, and um, can, yeah, we, can we give data too? instead of money? <laughs> no, 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 we no, don't just take money. data. Uh, we only, uh, you know, in France, uh, you need, uh, if you have a, um, a digital service, uh, you need to keep uh, information uh, for a year, for one year. Uh, and we attack uh, this uh, in the European court. Um, and in La Quadrature, we only keep information about uh, connections for uh, 15 days. Nice. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think it is important to, to know that uh, there is other way to connect to the social, uh, to your social network, uh, like le, the Fediverse. The Fediverse is another way to, to, to use um, social media, uh, like Mastodon, uh, it is uh, like Twitter, uh, and other things like that. You can provide your own uh, server, your own service, uh, and every, everybody could provide uh, this kind of thing, and everything is connected. Like in Mastodon, you have uh, Peertube. Peertube is uh, providing videos, uh, and you can connect with your Mastodon account. So all is connected and we are working on it to demonstrate that uh, there is another way that only big companies to provide services. Uh, the, it is not the, is the only way to do that. When there is a will, there is a way, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so um, our think tank is really a small structure because we're three and I'm actually the uh, only employee. Um, so you can just, yeah, go on the website and you can check the, the last report. Um, that is called, I think the one is, is really related to the topic we talked um, today. 
that is called uh, again um, big tech regulation uh, empower the many by regulating a few and there's a few uh, leads in it that that can actually uh, it's a bit of food for thought i guess um and uh, it actually tries to yeah to help uh, our political figures to uh, grasp a bit about what's happening right now because i think that's uh, uh, main issue is that they don't grasp it and they don't understand it. And to finish, I'll say that, um, in my opinion, uh, the main thing, and it's something I do every day, is like talk about this with uh, uh, friends, family, um, to not have a pessimistic, but just make people aware of what is happening right now. Uh, that could be, uh, as per civil liberties, uh, uh, threats, uh, that could be, uh, as per markets, uh, free markets, um, you know, threat and no competition. And, uh, and so I think it's also this, and we're going on the right way uh, to actually spread uh, the awareness of people, uh, but let's, uh, let's keep doing it. Yeah, so be a, node, thank you, Mehdi, for be a node of, you know, the spread yeah. Yeah, right exactly. uh, in the network. So a few, few things uh, for the people who are playing the Escape the Conference game. So it will be at 1 p.m., you know, the results you will see like what actually they will win or, or, or stuff. And also we have a, um, uh, we will f end today about the uh, uh, digital sobriety, right, panel, how to make, uh, let's say, lower emission IT uh, architecture and systems, right, uh, at 4 p.m. Uh, here. Thank you very much for active uh, listening and thank you for this panel. We can have a warm applause for them. Thank you very much. <laughs>